welcome everyone. It's wonderful to be with you. Tonight's theme is exploring our doubts and we're going to have a Visio Divina. And I'm going to begin by chanting a prayer that some of you may have seen that Richard Rohr posted on his website this morning about the um, a prayer that addresses the conviction of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd, which I know is on many people's minds. So I thought I would chant his prayer interspersed with a few lines from Amos used as a kind of an antiphon. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. God of truth, we thank you today for the justice of this moment and a judgment according to your will. We will have again inspired action that brought down the arrogant and called the powerful to account. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. May this give all people hope for our healing together. May you free us from our need for vengeance and clear the field to be ready for new seed. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Welcome to this digital contemplative prayer group. This is a place for all God's people. Whatever your beliefs or doubts, you are welcome here. If you're new to Centering Prayer, just follow the instructions as the session unfolds. You're also welcome to use the silence in any other way that is right for you. Loving God, we ask for your blessings upon this gathering recognizing that we bring the joys and sorrows of our lives here today. If anyone would like to mention silently or aloud expressions of gratitude or concern for ourselves, our families, our friends, our society, or our fragile planet, please do so now. Pray for Anthony, a young boy with a vicious cancer. Pray for my brother Richard's alcoholism. In gratitude, Lord, for your help and guidance yesterday and for today especially. Prayers for all of those struggling with addiction. I pray for our, our nation's healing. I pray for my friend Lenny, recovering from COVID and back surgery. Pray for our children. Order.
God, we trust that you hear our prayers, silent or spoken, wordless or in words. So tonight I'd like to talk a little bit about exploring our doubts. When I was in my 40s, I went to Union Theological Seminary and I received the gift of being invited to explore my doubt, to go deeply into my, I found myself in a place that invited me to go deeply into my doubts and my uncertainties about my faith. Some of my fellow students identified as pagans, Buddhists, there were Catholic women who felt called to the priesthood and didn't know what to do with that sense of call. There were gay people who had been treated very badly in the name of Christianity and yet still considered themselves Christian. There were African Americans who knew that their slave ancestors had give, been given Christianity to keep them docile and wondered what the meaning of their own Christianity was. I had expected when I went to seminary to find myself among people who were very certain about their faith and I was surprised and delighted to discover the opposite was true, that, that people were really struggling with what their faith meant and allowing themselves to feel all their feelings and doubts about that. In a, court, in a study group, a few friends of mine and I tried to decide how we would define what a Christian was and we realized that there was no definition that we could come up with other than just the simple a follow, follower of Jesus that would include all of us. So we kept it very, very simple. None of us were completely sure or settled in what our beliefs were at that time. I'm not sure I am now. I also felt very drawn to silent meditation and at first started doing that with the Buddhists and I allowed myself to wonder if I really believed in God or if maybe my life would be simpler if I could just let go of that belief but I couldn't God was still there when I was sitting on my cushion meditating with the Buddhists and so I learned a lot by giving myself permission to explore that possibility and discover that there was something very strong about my belief in God that I couldn't let go of, or that maybe God wouldn't let go of me. Allowing yourself to experience and explore your doubt is a gift you can give to yourself and an avenue to entering into deeper relationship with the sacred. At this time of year in the church calendar, we read the story of doubting Thomas, and we might sometimes think of Thomas's doubt as making him somehow less faithful a disciple than the others. But Thomas is the one who in that moment is invited to become most intimate with Jesus. He touches Jesus, he places his finger inside the wound of Jesus. Perhaps the other disciples were even jealous of the way that Thomas was invited to touch Jesus in that moment. And perhaps Thomas learned something about his own wounds by touching the wounds of Jesus. Doubt is essential to a life of prayer. Faith can't be reached without some kind of struggle. Thomas Merton says, Christian faith is a principle of questioning and struggle before it becomes a principle of certitude and of peace. We can't discover what we really believe without wrestling with our questions and our doubts. Our doubts can form a path which leads us deeper and deeper into our relationship with God. Anthony Bloom writes, this is what I mean by faith. 
not doubting in the sense of being in confusion and perplexity, but doubting in order to discover the reality of life, the kind of doubt that makes you want to question and discover more, that makes you want to explore. In our relationships with other people, when we become angry or estranged and then reconcile, our relationships are often stronger afterwards because of what we've learned, because of the work we've had to do. Similarly, in our relationship with God, the difficulties that we experience may bring us closer to God. Rather than trying to hide our feelings of doubt from God as if they were shameful, we can bring our doubts to God and ask God to be our partner in our exploration and quest for faith. I'll just quote, close with a reading from Stephen Charleston about doubt. Doubt is the friend of faith. It exercises the strength of what we believe, pulling us forward with new questions into new areas of spiritual exploration. To ask if anything is really out there, to wonder if there is a conscious creator, to insist on a reason for suffering, all of these are the legitimate gift of a doubting mind. We are doubters and believers, followers of a cycle of questions, moving towards the experience of discovery, testing our faith against our experience. Belief is not an answer that never questions again, any more than doubt is a question that never has anything but a single answer. So now let's turn to our 20 minute period of centering prayer. I invite you to sit with your spine straight your body hanging loosely down from your spine. And just notice how your body feels. Is there any tension you're holding that you could let go of with a little wiggle or a shake or a deep breath? Any adjustments you'd like to make to be comfortable, stable, relaxed and natural? during the prayer period. And just take a moment to notice how it feels to be in the room where you are, how it feels to be in your body, how it feels to be connected with our community in prayer, across space. And take a moment to notice who God is for you right now, whatever that might mean. A sense of unknowing, mystery, doubt, connection, gratitude, hopefulness, love, trust. Whatever is alive for you right now in your relationship with God, renew your commitment to be open to that divine presence. And if you'd like, you can silently begin to repeat the sacred word or touch your breath ever so gently with your attention. Using your sacred symbol to orient yourself towards God and during the prayer period, whenever you notice that you've become engaged with your thoughts, distracted by them, just gently disengage yourself, returning to the sacred symbol if necessary. Loving God, we, we offer our doubts and our longings into your loving presence.
Visio Divina is a form of divine seeing in which we prayerfully invite God to speak to our hearts as we look at an image. As we gaze together at an image tonight, I'm going to offer you some questions for silent reflection. And some of the questions may speak to you, while others you may choose to ignore. At the end of the Visio Divina, I'll invite you to share a word or phrase to express your experience of the image. As you gaze at the image, notice your breath and your body. Simply be present to the image and allow it to speak to your heart without any particular agenda. It might speak to you in words or wordlessly. How do you feel looking at the image? If you had to describe the image in a sentence or two, what would you say? If you were in the image, where would you place yourself? Do you get a glimpse of the sacred from this image?
is God speaking to you in this image? Does a name for God arise for you from this image? In silence, sit with what you have received. If you choose, I invite you to share a word or phrase that expresses your experience of this image. Love. You don't need to be afraid to doubt or explore. You don't need to be ashamed. Disbelief. Reassurance. Patient teacher.
vulnerability. Um, how touching our own wounds is like touching Jesus' wounds, although it can never compare. Compassion and generosity. Let's close by praying together the prayer of Jesus. Ground of all being, mother of life, father of the universe, your name is sacred, beyond speaking. May we know your presence. May your longings be our longings, in heart and in action. May there be food for the human family today and for the whole earth community. Forgive us the falseness of what we have done as we forgive those who are untrue to us. Do not forsake us in our time of conflict, but lead us into new beginnings. For the light of life, the vitality of life, and the glory of life are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for being here tonight. It was wonderful to be with you. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay.